This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello everybody, welcome to another video. This one is going to be a little bit different. You've seen me redo these mid-century-esque laminate dressers many times in my previous videos, but this one is different because I wasn't lucky enough to find wood underneath the laminate on the drawer faces, so it kind of changed my whole vision for this piece. There was some kind of funkiness going on inside this top drawer. I don't know, it smelled like baby poo, and considering I found a bunch of little clips and barrettes, I wouldn't be surprised if this was in a kid's room. This piece had a few strips of wood in the frame, but a lot of it was actually pressed wood, which is not that uncommon in mid-century pieces. But this was actually made by a pretty well-known manufacturer here in Canada, but this is definitely one of their lower quality pieces. In addition to the smell and obvious scuffs and dings, there was a pretty significant bubbling here on the back. I'm actually going to be using these Posca paint pens and this brand new color from Fusion Mineral Paint to turn this into something completely different with a higher end feel. Just because something is cheap doesn't mean it needs to look cheap. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. So this is actually a piece I picked up from Facebook Marketplace and I had sort of committed to it before I got there. And I was basing that commitment on previous experience with these mid-century style laminate dressers. Even though the top and sides are usually laminate, quite often you have a solid wood frame and more often than not solid wood drawers underneath the laminate coating. I wasn't so lucky with this piece. There were a few parts that were detached, but those are easily fixable. By looking here, you can see that part of the actual frame is pressed wood and I don't see that very often. It's almost always a solid wood frame, even on the cheapest pieces from this era. So this one was quite unusual. I started by giving this piece a quick vacuuming inside and out just to get rid of most of the dust and cobwebs and random bits and pieces. I already know I'm going to have to replace these drawer bottoms, there's no way I can clean that and I would never in a million years just put a liner over that. So these glue blocks are going to have to be removed as well as the plastic drawer guides so I can slide the bottoms out. I actually kind of like the hardware that came with this piece, so I'm going to be reusing it. I am, however, going to be removing this little strip of decorative molding here, and you can see this is actually what the laminate coating is applied to. You can see how they've printed on, it almost looks like a fake ribbon figure <laughs> to make it look like real wood, but it's not. These are the poles, they have kind of a brassy, bronzy vibe, and I think I'm going to be leaving those original, but they do need to be cleaned up a bit. Once I have all of the hardware off, I'm just going to put them in this little plastic bucket and add enough vinegar to just cover them. Having a quick closer look here at the drawers and the construction of them, you can see on the inside that there is wood grain and this can be misleading for people just starting out. They might look at that and look at the front and you see this wood grain and assume that it's a solid wood drawer. It's not. <laughs> The drawer bottom is fiberboard and the front of the drawer face is a laminate coating and the inside of the drawer face is a very thin piece of wood veneer. Sometimes you can strip this laminate coating off and get down to the veneer. In this particular case, I would have ended up sanding down into the pressed wood. All of these things considered, this piece is going to be one of the rare ones that ends up fully painted. The only parts of this piece that are wood that is visible are the legs. <laughs> These little mini ratcheting screwdrivers are amazing for taking off parts like this that you can't fit a normal screwdriver in or even one of the little stubby screwdrivers. The reason I'm taking this piece out is because there's one side that is no longer attached and you can see here that it's because the staples got squished. <laughs> so on this side I'm actually just going to pop these out and when it comes time to replace that I'll actually use some wood glue and a small staple. Now there is some pretty serious trickery going on with these two drawers here with the wood trim on them. 
These are not curved drawers. The way they added their finish, it makes it look like there's a curve, which would mimic the trim on the top, but they are completely flat. The majority of the glue blocks on the bottom of the drawers weren't attached all that well, so it wasn't that difficult to take the drawer bottoms off. I need to go get replacements, so I'm taking some measurements here and I'm going to run over to the local hardware store. So I'm ready to put this piece back in. The one side that was still good, I just backed the staples out far enough that I could put this back in place and then tap them back in. There wasn't a whole lot of room there, so I'm using this little piece of metal to actually bang them in the rest of the way. The drawer boxes are made of plywood and some of the layers have delaminated, so I need to re-glue them. This is not a very high quality piece and I'm not going to worry about some of the areas where there are pieces of the veneer missing. I'm just going to glue down everything that's loose and try to make the best of this situation. If this was something I was doing for my own home, that would be one thing, but I sell most of my pieces. And a really good lesson in furniture flipping is knowing when to scale it up and when to pull it back a bit. And based on the quality of this piece and the fact that I've had to go and purchase new drawer bottoms, I'm already at the point where I'm probably not gonna make any money on this piece when I sell it because there is a finite amount of money I'm gonna be able to get for it. It's one of the reasons I'm reusing the hardware, and while new hardware might look amazing on this piece, I have to kind of keep the cost down. So that's something you need to consider if this is something you're just getting into. It's not that some pieces aren't worth saving, and in this case this piece was definitely saved, this no doubt would have ended up in the trash otherwise, but you just have to sort of realize where you can and can't make money on a piece. So sometimes when I'm dealing with bubbled laminate tops, I just sand them down and seal them. This is probably the worst bubbling I've ever seen, so I kind of don't have a choice here. I have to literally cut this all out and I'm going to be using some Bondo to fill the area and smooth it out. This actually gives you a really good look at the fiberboard, sometimes called hardboard, that the laminate is printed on. It's very papery, it's almost like layers of paper that have been glued and pressed together. I need to cut deep enough that I can get a good layer of Bondo here, but I don't want to cut it too deep so that I end up with a really thick layer of Bondo. You can even see here where whatever spilled on this or got up underneath has discolored the fiberboard. I did double check, it's not actually wet, it might have been some sort of oil that just discolored it, but I don't have to worry about drying this out before I add my Bondo. Bondo is super smelly, so I'm gonna grab my respirator. And just before I get into the Bondo, I just wanna say a few words here. As you know, I've spent the last several months learning as much as I could from a platform called Skillshare. Information on filming and editing, but to be honest, this class on self-care at work by Melissa Stignis is probably one of the most important I've watched. YouTube is a cruel beast and it takes up a lot of our time and effort and bandwidth, so to speak. You're trying so hard to keep up with everything and keep everybody happy and put out nice content. It can really take a toll and having spent a lot of the last several years literally in burnout mode. I can attest to the importance of taking time for yourself and it's something I need to get better at. This class really helped me focus and hone in on where my energy was going and what I need to do to recalibrate, if you will. I know that I'm not the only one struggling with this, so if this seems like something that could benefit you, the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. You can try this class out for yourself and put yourself on a better path. You don't need to live in constant state of stress and burnout. Take it from Nacho. <laughs> Love you guys. Taking some more time for myself is definitely something I need to get better at, but I'm excited to at least have a plan now on how to accomplish that. So I'm just mixing up my Bondo. Bondo is a two-part product and once you mix the hardener into the main part of the Bondo you generally have a fairly small window to work with it before it gets too firm. I'm just using the same popsicle stick I stirred up the Bondo with and a piece of painter's tape to attach it to the back so that I get a nice flat surface. Bondo dries extremely, extremely hard and it's not the easiest to sand through so I don't want to have too much excess here. But you do want it to be a little bit proud of the surface so that when you do sand it down you get a nice smooth, flat, flush finish.
I popped an 80 grit sand pad on my surf prep to get through most of the bondo and then I changed out the sandpaper to 180 grit and that's what I ended up using on the rest of the piece. I am going to be painting this so I don't need to get all of this off, I just need to scuff the surface. The problem with laminate furniture and patching like this is that you have different surfaces with different porosity which will affect how your paint goes on so you want to seal this. You can use a spray primer. Here I'm using what is called a shellac seal coat. You have to be careful with using straight on shellac under paint because it does have a little bit of a wax content and sometimes your paint won't adhere properly. This seal coat also acts as a primer so I won't need to apply an additional primer before painting. All I'm going to need to do is scuff the surface again with probably around a 180 grit sand pad. While that's drying I'm going to remove the legs. The legs are actually solid hardwood and I'm going to be doing a paint wash on them because I want them to look a little bit more natural. I don't want to paint them the same color I'm painting the rest of it. And I'm just using this odor blocking spray primer on the inside. There was just a little bit of that weird smell lingering and that took care of it. Once all of the shellac seal coat had dried, I just scuffed up the surface and got to work sanding down the legs. Surf Prep has this thick foam pad that you put underneath your sandpaper, which makes it perfect for going around curves like this. I know there's a trick some people do where they put the leg into a power drill and just hold the sandpaper. I don't love that because one, it creates a lot of heat and it can burn your hand if you're not wearing a glove. And honestly, to do it this way, it's, it's really fast. I wouldn't really be saving a whole lot of time doing it the other way. I started off with an 80 grit pad to remove the finish and then I switched out to a 180 which will be the final sanding before I do the paint wash. I recently acquired some of Fusion Mineral Paint's newest colors and Oakum is one of them. That's what I'm going to be painting the dresser in and Algonquin is what I'm going to be using to make sort of a beige wash on the legs. I did about a 50-50 mix. Were I doing this again, I would probably dilute it slightly more. It was a little bit more opaque than I was initially hoping for, but it's not completely opaque. You can still see a little bit of the wood grain, but yeah, it would have been nice if I diluted it a bit more. Once I got the legs done, I took the hardware out of the vinegar and just gave them a quick scrub with a nylon bristle brush. I actually like the amount of tarnish on these. I don't want them to look shiny new. I want them to actually blend in a little bit more with the paint color. Speaking of paint, it's finally time. You can see I already have one very thin coat on and now I'm going in with my second coat. I like to do a really thin first coat. A lot of beginners, they go for full coverage on the first coat and they usually end up with either paint that doesn't adhere very well or a crazy amount of brush strokes. When you're using a brush, brush strokes are inevitable. You're gonna get some. You can minimize it using a mister and sanding down in between, but you are still gonna get some brush strokes. But by doing more thin coats instead of less thick coats, you'll have a much better result. Now I've never used Fusion Stain and Finishing Oil before and I bought this recently. It's their white stain and finishing oil and I thought it might be cool over the legs. I just need to tweak the color a little bit. It was a very subtle change but it was the change that I was looking for and I'll show you the two side by side. It's a little bit more white but it's not as white as it would have been if I would used an actual white wash. So I'm actually happy with how they turned out in the end. I'm giving the drawer boxes a quick sanding here. I want these drawers to feel as fresh and new as possible once I put the new bottoms in and I initially bought more fiberboard. I only have an eighth of an inch to work with but I ended up instead of using the fiberboard I found a huge sheet of 1 8 inch oak veneered plywood so I returned the fiberboard bought that instead it was a much bigger sheet and I just had them cut it down for me to the exact sizes that I need. And I have plenty left for other projects. Replacing drawer bottoms is pretty common in this job. Mm -hmm. 
Once I had the new insert in, I just used some small nails to attach it and then did the same thing for the rest of the drawers. I had a lot of little scrap pieces left over from another project, so I used those for my new glue blocks. The glue blocks will help the bottom stay in place and it also helps sturdy up the drawer, so it's something I definitely want to add. This did take considerable time, but considering the time and expense I've already put into this piece, it's, it's a step I wouldn't want to skip. This was definitely one of those furniture flips that didn't go quite as initially intended. It happens. You gotta roll with it. I joked with Andrea a few times about putting this out on the curb or even burning it. But you know, people rag on these pieces a lot because they're very cheaply made. But if you've noticed in the beginning, there was a sticker on the back that said made in 1968. This piece is already 54 years old and it has lasted along with all of those solid wood framed veneered pieces and even the solid wood pieces. It's still here. We shouldn't be throwing these things in the trash, when with a little bit of time and effort, they can become fully functional, beautiful pieces in your home. I recently read that somewhere over 10 million tons of furniture waste ends up in landfills in Canada and the US every year. That has to stop. We really need to stop hollering at people that pull furniture literally from these piles and paint them and refinish them, because in many cases, it is literally saving them. Yeah, so what do these Posca paint pens have to do with furniture? This is something that I've been wanting to try for a while, but it's a little scary. I've never used these markers on paper, let alone on furniture, but I thought this would be kind of a fun experiment. You'll notice that I changed the orders of the drawers a little bit and put the ones with the trim together, which leaves this sort of flat space here on the bottom. Many of you know that I'm also a tattoo artist and have been for a long time, so I thought this would be kind of a fun way to incorporate these two loves of mine. This might look yellow on the video, but it's actually a metallic gold color, and I'm drawing a very tattoo style peony on this dresser. I don't want to show you all of it because it's going to sort of ruin the reveal, but that was just a snippet. Once everything was done, I used Fusion Mineral Paints Beeswax Hemp Oil. Fusion actually has its own top coat. You don't have to do this, but I love using this particular product because it deepens the color and it also adds just a little extra protection. So looking back at what I started with, I can't believe I actually paid money for this piece. I probably <laughs> should have tried to haggle a little bit, but I'm kind of soft when it comes to that and I shouldn't be. I thought this was going to be a quick flip, but once I got it home and really got looking at it, I knew that I was not in over my head, but I knew that this wasn't going to be a money maker. So I had to make the best of it. I really hope that you like what I've done. Let me know if you want to see me experiment a little bit more with these markers. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.